Collagen, the most abundant protein in the human body. And there are 16 types of it. However, the most important, the ones that represent 80 to 90% of all our collagen, types one and three. One and three are important, you guessed it, in the skin. So today we're gonna to be talking about how to hang on to that all important collagen. Hi, I'm Dr. Sam, helping you get closer to great skin days like I've done for thousands of patients in my Harley Street Clinic. Now, collagen. It is one of the top concerns for my patients. It's on everybody's mind when it comes to the passage of time because when you start to lose collagen, your skin changes in very fundamental ways. And when you're looking at things like fine lines and wrinkles and skin folds, you guessed it, you're losing collagen. I would even go as far to say is that collagen is the protein of youth. So collagen keeps our skin thick and juicy, but unfortunately life is unkind. So as we age, particularly around the menopause when estrogen levels plummet, our skin starts to produce less collagen. Factor in the environment with UV rays, and all of a sudden you've got the fibroblast, which is the workhorse producing collagen, elastin, and hyaluronic acid in the dermis, starts to slow down and it can't replace it as quickly as it's broken down. What that means is the skin becomes thinner. Now, when the skin is thinner, areas of the skin that move, for example, the top lip, when we talk, the skin around the eyes, when we smile, when we frown, when we raise our eyebrows, all those areas are continually squeezing the skin. Now, that squeeze over time leads to lines being etched in. But if you think about cardboard versus fine silk, you'll see that the thicker cardboard is much more resistant to those creases becoming etched in than, for example, the fragile, delicate silk. The moral of the story being, keep your collagen up in order to resist the formation of creases and wrinkles. So today, long story short, we're gonna talk about ways to keep your collagen factory going. So we can look at collagen preservation in three ways. We can look at our skincare, we can look at procedures, and we can look at lifestyle factors. So I think let's talk about skincare first. So we can talk about collagen preserving it, building it, preventing loss without talking about vitamins A, B, and C. Now, vitamin A, probably the most important, that's our retinoid category, and really is the gold standard when it comes to preventing the signs of aging. And, you know, I, I think the discovery of retinoids as the powerful rejuvenation ingredient that they are was an accident. It was discovered whilst treating acne patients back in the 70s. And really, we rely on those as the cornerstone of any effective routine to tackle premature aging. When it comes to retinoids, we have everything from tretinoin, which is prescription grade, all the way down to retinol, retinaldehyde, and reactive retinoids. So a real spectrum, and you can find one at the potency um, of your choice that suits your skin, and all of them have some benefits when it comes to producing more collagen, but importantly, also reducing the breakdown of existing collagen. So people get very worried about using retinoids in summer because of the impact potentially of UV, but actually in studies it's been proven that pre-use of a retinoid will actually reduce the production of the enzymes, the matrix metalloproteinases that actually are responsible for gobbling up your collagen when exposed to UV. So hence, I recommend using retinoids all year round. They are that important. It's certainly something I've relied on for my skin you know, since I'd say my early 30s. So that's retinoids. Then we have vitamin C. Again, we know this to be an excellent ingredient, both as a free radical scavenger, meaning it, it tends to mop up the free radicals generated by exposure to things like um, the sunshine, to pollution, even to what we consume in our diets, all produce free radicals which drive the aging process in the skin. And not only that, it also helps our skin actually assemble collagen molecules that they form, these effective structures, what we call a triple helix protein. 
Then we have niacinamide, which is a great all-rounder for skin, super gentle, great for barrier function, but also helps with collagen production. So the combination of that trio together, if your skin can tolerate it, is really an excellent one when it comes to preserving that pinchability factor of your skin. Other ingredients that can help as well, of course, alpha hydroxy acids have a role to play, particularly in the higher potencies and the kind of thing you might either get with in-office cosmeceutical grade and AHAs and with chemical peels. And we can't talk about skincare and collagen without talking about the importance of sunscreen. So of course, do no harm, prevent your collagen loss in the first place. And that is something that is so, so important, particularly when it comes to educating teenagers about how they handle their skin, because good habits put in place when you're at the right age really will pay for themselves for years and decades to come. So proper sunscreen side of that, I mean, broad spectrum with UVA protection, look for the UVA symbol with the circle around it to suggest that it's at least a third of the SPF you're getting. So use a high SPF broad spectrum product to protect your collagen and do it every single day. Use it the right way, use the right quantities and get into that habit as soon as you can. Now, when it comes to procedures, things that you would do in the clinic, um, there's a whole spectrum of things you can do to make the skin produce more collagen. And sometimes you'll find that it'll be a combination of procedures that works best. I certainly tend to ensure that the skincare approach is put in place first because it can be quite dramatic, the difference that you can achieve from just using particularly the prescription grade retinoids in combination with vitamin C and niacinamide. However, if you want to go further, there's a whole array of things you can do. So everything from chemical peels, as I mentioned, which will trigger new collagen if they're they've done at a sufficient potency. Um, and then you have laser devices, you know, everything from the kind of non-ablative fraxel devices, even IPL, anything that generates a degree of heating of the dermis will trigger new collagen production. Um, and the way to think about it when it comes to heating the skin, delivering energy to the skin, is if you think about a steak, when you put it in the pan and, and you heat it, it shrinks. That is due to collagen fibers tightening and that is the effect that you are trying to achieve. Now, I wouldn't dream of doing this video without uh, mentioning Dr. Patali, lovely Rakesh, who is doing a live with me again this Sunday. We're bringing back the lives, by the way. Um, but he really is a wizard when it comes to choosing the right device for an individual skin and affecting changes that are quite dramatic, particularly when it, you go to the more aggressive, ablative end of the laser spectrum. So what we call resurfacing lasers. So essentially in that instance, you're targeting water to heat the skin to achieve a controlled level of injury that over time then heals resurfacing, allowing both a new epidermis and a regenerative change in the dermis, which leads to new collagen formation, making the skin thicker, but also improving the quality of the top layer too. So it can be really helpful with signs of sun damage, like brown pigmentation, so age spots, sunspots, or solar lentigines as we call them. And it can also help improve pore size as well. If lasers are too scary, if peels are too much and you haven't got the capacity for downtime or perhaps your skin tone means that these things are perhaps higher risk as they can be when you get into managing darker skin tones, then we think about things like microneedling, which in the office we can actually target deeper into the skin, right into the upper part of the dermis. And again, that controlled injury is sufficient to drive neocollagenesis, new collagen production, and can actually produce really quite impressive results for something that really has very little downtime, redness for a couple of days at most, um, and doesn't remove the top layer, which is why it's safe to use in all skin types, which is actually a very reassuring thing. Um, fillers will also, to some extent, trigger new collagen production. So not only are you replacing hyaluronic acid, which is often cross-linked and therefore designed to not break down overnight as our usual hyaluronic acid does. It stays around for six to nine months and even longer in some instances. But the very fact of injecting a filler into the skin 
it stretches our fibroblasts. So it actually makes our own skin produce more collagen into the process. So people often find that they don't even have fillers more than once, they still end up in a slightly better position than they would have done had they never had filler at all. But at the end of the day, when it comes to procedural dermatology and procedures, it's really about seeing somebody who has access to the full array of the kit, knows which is best for you and your skin concerns, because oftentimes it's not just about fine lines, it's about pigmentation or broken vessels, other signs of some damage at the same time. So it's about cherry picking the best procedures on the back of the best skincare regime for you. And then in terms of lifestyle, things that you can do to manage your own collagen and reduce its breakdown. So clearly it's very important to eat an antioxidant rich diet. So that means eating colorful fruits and vegetables, um, dark leafy greens, you know, things like sweet, sweet potato, tomatoes, especially because they contain lycopene, which is something that's thought to give our skin increased ability to defend itself against UV rays. Um, foodstuffs like blueberries and carrots, things that are colorful and dense in nutrition and far better for you when it comes to extracting um, valuable nutrition from our foods than, than taking a supplement. So those things are super important. Other things you can think about include things like polypodium leucotomus, which is in the supplement um, that does seem to increase our skin's own ability to protect itself against UV. That's something that I give to a lot of my patients, particularly if they're going to be spending long periods of time abroad in sunny climates. I think that's super helpful. And I do think at times, if you're struggling to get it from your, your diet that a vitamin C supplement can be worthwhile as well because vitamin C is so important when it comes to collagen production. Finally, zinc, something that we can often find that we, if we don't consider our diets carefully can be quite hard to get sufficient quantities of. A lot of people have low levels of zinc without realizing it. So again, seeking out foodstuffs that are rich in zinc, such as nuts, um, which are an excellent source as are mushrooms. So as you can see, there's lots of things you can do to take charge of your collagen levels, to boost them, to reduce breakdown, and to preserve and maintain the collagen that you have. This is especially pertinent if you're entering the perimenopause or you're already in the menopause. We Women are thought to lose 30% of our collagen in the first five years. So that's quite a dramatic kind of potential for thinning of our dermis. So really important to think about those different ways that we can both boost and protect and preserve the collagen that we have. So that's my guide to looking after your collagen, preserving what you have and boosting it where needed. So I hope it was helpful guys. If it was, please hit the bell so I know. Share it with somebody who needs to hear this content today and I'll see you again very soon. Bye for now.